With the extended lockdown in parts of Nigeria gradually coming to an end, many state governments are gearing up to reopen primary and secondary schools. If and when this happens, it will bring to an end four months of inactivity that kept school children at home and will have worsened the poor learning conditions that have retarded the growth of the education sector in the country, particularly in public schools. We should now engage in conversation about all of this with Chukwemeka Nwajuba, a former executive secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund and currently Nigeria's Minister of State for Education. Nwajuba is also a former member of the House of Representatives. Good morning and welcome to the program. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Honorable, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for agreeing to come on the morning show. Very quickly, I mean, you must have listened to my introduction. Uh, public schools, private schools, they are all on uh, lockdown. But we have seen that the uh, private schools have been making some effort to do e-learning, to keep the uh, children engaged, to keep them occupied. But we have not seen this with regard to uh, public schools. Why is this the case? Why is it so difficult for the Nigerian government to work out a policy of keeping children, particularly in public schools, engaged during this period of the lockdown? Considering the fact that we don't know when this lockdown will end or for how long we'll be dealing with the uh, challenges of uh, COVID-19. Now, we're not blaming the federal government uh, because, of course, education is on the concurrent uh, list. What have you seen? What is the situation policy-wise? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ruben. Uh, two things uh, out of the way quickly. I wasn't executive uh, director, uh, secretary at Ted Fund. I was chairman of the board. But uh, what we as educationists in Nigeria see uh, with relation to educating our children is that education for us is an organized form of teaching and learning. That's essentially what it is. We do not operate outside the constitutional framework. The, the, the country has a federal framework in which education runs in the concurrent list. We have 68,000 public primary schools around Nigeria, and we have a neighborhood of about 35,000 uh, private primary schools around the country. It may not be possible for federal governments to directly uh, decide what will happen to those primary schools. However, we owe uh, the populace a duty as a federal government to regulate and offer a platform for everybody to come together. Uh, I will also want to say that schools have not been shut for four months. Uh, when we gave the directive for schools to uh, go on break would be somewhere at the end of uh, March, and uh, many schools complied. At the secondary school level, we have direct involvement in 104 uh, primary, uh, secondary schools, which we regard in Nigeria as the unity schools. They are supposedly our model for how schools should be run for the rest of the government secondary schools and private secondary schools around Nigeria. But that's, that's at the secondary and uh, uh, primary level. At the tertiary level, we have federal government-owned universities and polytechnics and, and colleges of education. We also have uh, state-owned uh, public institutions at that level. Then we have private, sec uh, private sector-owned uh, uh, institutions at the tertiary level. It is important for us to appreciate that in the entire gamut from one to 12 years in the, in the primary and secondary school and, the, and at the tertiary level, government provides a platform for support. And everybody who is a player be you a state government or a local government uh, or even a private person, then uh, buys into or keys into that uh, rollout. What we have done right now, and which the Ministry of Education is coordinating, is a gradual uh, in, in, in phase. And everybody who is in phasing into it has a, a, an option to modify. Uh, right now, about 12 states are already running public programs on education at the public level, 
So it's not true that we're not doing anything at public level. So, but because they're at state level, Lagos has Lagos State, Anambra State, the key, um, all of them are focused. Uh, Anambra State Broadcasting Service, uh, Lagos State TV, every, they have programs at that level. We have a, a, a clear list and a, a timetable for all of the states who have already, uh, they're all liaising at the portal where the Ministry of Education, the, the Department of uh, uh, ICT, has a platform at the Ministry of Education website here in Abuja where all states can connect. We are in touch with all of the suburb chairmen because at the beginning of this, uh, the Minister of Education, Malama and uh, the Ministry of Education and all our practitioners, we sat down together. We've been having um, uh, webinars and, and uh, Zoom uh, meetings at where we agreed on a format for everybody to participate and then cascade that down to the states. All of them have plugged in. All the states have plugged in, but they have not started implementing at uh, different levels. So right now we have um, the many states that have already, and we're publishing for, at our, on our website, the timetables for all the educational uh, programs that we are running, the, si the subjects that we are teaching. And uh, we are at the moment also talking with the Federal Radio Corporation and NTA with a view to rolling out uh, a broader uh, uh, overview of all of these so that everybody anywhere, you may not necessarily tune into what your, your own state is doing. You can then have it on a, on a level that is at the federal level. So really, um, everybody is coming together. Uh, we appreciate the understanding of the states, the way everybody has actually uh, come on to the discourse and has made them so, or made their platforms available for what the program is. The Ministry of Education has a, a specialized department, the NERDC, that runs the curricula and makes sure that everybody is fitting into it. Right now, we are a little bit more focused on preparing those who are at the exam stages, with those who are in, in uh, class nine, which is called the Junior Secondary School three and Senior Secondary School uh, uh, class five, six which is a, almost our 12th exit class, so that they will be prepared and be able to compete favorably with uh, their counterparts uh, when they come for the uh, exams at NACO and at WIEC. Because you would have noticed that um, over time, there hasn't been a coordinated effort to do, use the period that teachers normally, or they would normally take to keep students over a longer period, in the Easter break, and keep them in school and give them some reverse form. But the Ministry of Education this year has now used this to uh, get what we call master teachers and master trainers to review the curriculum with them and uh, give enhanced preparation uh, for the exams. The exams have been postponed because we believe that um, uh, students ought to have gotten through with all the syllable before the exam date. And because the exams have been staggered a little bit based on, the, um, uh, on our fears with the cor uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, we've agreed that there must be some sort of a, a stagger to the dates. And when we resume, we want to make sure that all the students are prepared. So the Ministry of Education is coordinating a nationwide effort. It is not possible for the Ministry of Education to immediately begin to broadcast for all the classes, the entire 12 classes from primary to secondary. But we have staggered programs along that. We are also working in tandem with a lot of service providers, online platforms, um, uh, communication companies, technology-driven companies. A lot of platform providers have made their resources available, and we are really grateful to them. The international community, the UNICEF, World Bank, everybody is working in collaboration with us. Uh, GLOW, MTN, um, uh, Airtel, um, um, uh, Nine Mobile, all of them are working. Uh, everybody is providing what they can. Uh, uh, all the uh, service providers, even Nigerian, um, Kunga, um, everybody is offering what they can. So everybody is bringing a lot to the table. Our job is to coordinate these efforts and then ask everybody to key in as the, at the point that they can, because we've also noticed that um, devices are a problem, access is a problem, internet connectivity is a problem. Uh, not everybody is connected at the same way. We've seen what private sector uh, 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 schools are doing. And they're doing very well, but uh, you can also imagine that all of them would not be running at the same speed. Some of them have issues re from reopening yesterday. I've been monitoring, uh, I've gone to a few schools, uh, monitoring how the actual um, interface between students 
and uh, pupils and uh, teachers ha have a, is occurring, and we are trying to help them make those adjustments. The Ministry of Fed the, uh, the ICT Department and all the parasitals around there are working in conjunction with all of them, trying to streamline what they are doing. Starting yesterday, uh, most of these have just come on stream. But as you w would also imagine, there are people and there are um, uh, schools that have actually had some level of um, this before now, and they are only enhancing this. There are schools that are just coming on stream. There are schools that are still having problems with their PTAs and their, um, and their school teachers associations with, with a view to uh, trying to set out how this can happen. Schools want to charge a fee or at a reduced cost. They are still discussing discounts for those who are coming in at the private level. But we at the public level must then just provide, because we have a duty to those who elected us and who put us in the office, to run this open gamut. We have a problem with many states where there aren't enough devices or the, uh, connectivity modules for them to be able to get on. I mean, there are far-flung places in Nigeria. It, those are our even chief responsibility because those who can speak for themselves and those who have access at uh, the private levels, uh, uh, they are our choice partners, but they already have limited provision for themselves. We are, we, are, we are entrusted with those who are the most vulnerable. Our biggest concern is at the, at the fringes of society where nobody can reach or who nobody can get to. Those are places where we are figuring out whether we go through radio, whether we go through um, NTA. We, we've been at this, we've been discussing with NTA, they've been fantastic. DG uh, Federal Railway Corporation has been fantastic. Certainly Everybody is, honorable. like I said, trying to do their best. Yeah. And these educational yes. interventions that you have spoken about are very much appreciated. We can see it happening across different state governments. For example, what I was actually going to bring up with you was a particular intervention in Lagos State, whereby one million electronic devices were being provided to students to aid their education at this time. But I was going to ask on how you planned on overcoming the hurdles that you mentioned. Data, access to power, only 23 million households in Nigeria have a generator that cannot also always be used. So what plans are in place to actually overcome these hurdles that you've spoken about? Especially if we're talking about reaching the rural poor as well. Sorry, just to add in. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Salami. Part of what we're trying to do at this stage would be to have everybody um, centers, community centers, where children may not necessarily uh, mix in huge numbers, but to listen to radios. Uh, we've looked at um, the 8,800 words in Nigeria. There are lots of people who do not have uh, the kind of access those who are in Lagos or who are in uh, Abuja may have. We have far-flung places in Gamburu. We have far-flung places in Hinterlands, inside uh, or some of the River Rhine areas. Those are our concerns. We, we've, we're watching as to how they can log in and at the programs that the states are doing. But what, this, what we've done with the states and what we've asked them to do is publish the state EMSI offices. Where our, our association with all states uh, is done alongside an EMIS office with the state suburb offices and to react locally. We may not be able to provide devices at the moment because we're still working with uh, uh, some of the device uh, makers and owners who may want to help with uh, uh, disadvantaged areas. And, uh, but more important is content. We're trying to make sure that what we have, because um, uh, if you look at what ASU published yesterday about uh, the, the, what we're doing at the Ministry of Education, they, they've said, and like, we also agree, that uh, uh, on, online learning is not just about devices, it's about content. We, our teachers have, many of them have been trained. We can't train all of them at the same time, but the, those whom we have, we uh, 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 have asked them to do this properly. But how to reach the rural poor without devices, without electricity, without them, um, uh, we're looking at what kind of pro programs they can get to. That's what led us to the FRS, uh, Federal Radio Corporation uh, Agreement. All of that agreement hasn't become implemented. What w is um, trying to get them on stream? We are getting some dislocations. I'm sure you've heard, uh, as of yesterday, can we start, can the state wants to move away some imaginary children from the state? Uh, you need to know where the children are. 
We need to be able to be sure who we are trying to get to. And we need the cooperation of states to do that. The kind of support we want is we provide all the um, pro programs and we ask the states to key in and let us know what, in what further way we can. Lagos State is able to do, I don't know how many devices they've procured or how they procured it, but you've heard already Edo State was already at the forefront of those of providing um, uh, tablets at teacher level alone. But right now, to get to every child with a device with which they can, uh, we take a national effort. Um, you've heard that the Ministry of uh, Digital Economy uh, and uh, Communication uh, had already uh, started work on a, a large scale um, uh, provision around Nigeria. That um, module hasn't come on stream yet. But we, we, must, we must keep teaching to uh, those who are available at the moment while we're working on how to ramp up uh, participation at the fringes. That, that, you're correct, 100%. Those are our, uh, we're a social, a social ministry, and it is our key responsibility to reach out to them. We're planning to, to we're talking with Conga, we're talking with um, uh, Jumi, all the prov providers, and say, what do you have? What's the kind of uh, arrangement we, we, we can make with you? How do we support you? Uh, I don't think we have enough devices in Nigeria. Yes. Honorable Minister, yes. sorry to cut you short. I would like you to uh, uh, clarify a few things for us. Uh, you've made it clear that exams have been postponed yes, by WAEC. Now, WAEC, uh, when WAEC issued that statement, WAEC was saying, until further notice. And that WAEC will study the situation and then determine whether the exam that should have been held April, May, that's the uh, school start exam, can be held at any particular point uh, this year. Do you see any hope that that exam will take place? Uh, does the uh, Ministry of Education uh, have any contingency plan about how that exam can be conducted, maybe electronically, maybe a change of format. Now, why YX says exams have been postponed until further notice, NECO is saying something different. NECO says its own main exam and uh, the uh, BECE uh, has not been postponed. Now, anybody saying so is fake news, that what has been postponed is the National Common Entrance Examination. What exactly is the situation? Because the uh, uh, NECO uh, statement that I'm quoting was as recent as April 9. So can we have some clarifications on this? Uh, thank you, Dr. Ruben. I think many Nigerians and around the world will agree with me and uh, the Minister of Education that we are not an independent uh, government. We are running within a, a system. We're running within a government system. The government has already asked for a shutdown of uh, movement, activities, and uh, states governments have also reacted by also shutting down schools. When we gave out the directive to shut down schools, we were uh, ahead of everybody because we didn't want our children to be carriers at the time or make themselves available for uh, uh, this. We wanted them to be with their parents whenever this uh, uh, begins, and this is what uh, we primarily achieved. The examination bodies, if you look at WAEC, WAEC is West African Examination Council. So there are a group of countries on that. And we agreed, uh, or I spoke with the registrar of uh, WAEC, immediately this opened, and to say, look, truly, the way the exams are formatted is such that there will be, we will need the schools, we need the centers, we will need X, Y, Z, for, and then we need all of that. Nobody can be sure immediately when all of this lockdown, when we can get a hold on, on how to manage this pandemic and how we will run things there from. It is important that we suspend activities in that regard. WAEC agreed um, and consulted with the rest of the countries and then agreed to issue the statement you, you pointed out, we, we issued. That is uh, some sort of an agreement round off. Where we have a, a small uh, mix-up will be at the NACO stage, where there are three exams, actually. One is the exam that relates to common entrances into federal uh, unity schools, which uh, normally we will get about 75,000 or uh, thereabouts children participating for the less than 5,000, 10,000 places we have in all these, uh, our own secondary schools. That's the entrance exam. But they also conduct the exams that are at 9, 
and at 12, which is uh, the, the junior WAEC, uh, what we call junior uh, uh, exam, and the senior uh, uh, exam. Those two exams are done at the end of, the, of, the, of, the, of an academic year. Right now, we do not know when that academic year will end because we now have this. But to ask, answer you directly, we are making contingency plans and we're trying to see if it is possible to test children entirely on computer, as computer-based exams and then to re check how many of the people who registered for these exams even have access to devices to be able to take that kind of exam if we do that. That analysis is ongoing. We want to, we know there's definitely no way we can uh, uh, say now that everybody has access to uh, a device from which they would take, uh, even at what jam stage, we, we, we set up uh, CBTs, uh, centers already around the country. We license people around the country. So you, to now ask children, we don't believe everybody owns the device. So, and we can't get them to the centers because there's no movement. And then we can't have them gather because there's law against getting. So we're going to, we're designing a format uh, to then take care of them in batches or to rejig the exam. That is what uh, the experts at NACO are doing at the moment. They will come out with a, 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 a final position and the ministry will announce that. But we want to assure parents that there is nothing we are going to do that is not in their interest. The president, uh, President Mohamed Buhari, has directly ordered that anything that we're going to do must first of all be a people content matter first before we start discussing uh, how much or whatever is going to cost. The important thing for the president at the moment is how do Nigerians want it to happen? And that's what we are uh, fine-tuning at the moment. We cannot rule out a plan that is against the people of Nigeria. We are not going to rule out anything that has not been agreed to by parents. We are taking their views on board at the moment. NACO has now streamlined the three different things we are working on. One, do we wait until everything is finished and then that will affect the school year and how people go into school? Because if we suspend intake completely, that means we cannot uh, promote orders. Or do we need to take in people, pupils first and have an exam that is essentially CBT based and then on that CBT platform then use that as entrance and then exit. Do we then also use the same format for real exams? The, what are we going to do for practicals? Uh, how do you uh, titrate or use your pipette when you are not online? There are so many things that are in consideration, and that's what they are working on. Two documents are already out on that, and we don't want to give um, uh, parents any particular direction until we get clearances from... Um, uh, that's why education is part of the PT, uh, presidential tax force on on restarting the economy, on, on, on the whole uh, case completely. We are looking at all of them holistically, and we do not want to misdirect parents at this point. We want to be able to be clear as to what it is that the country is open, but we're looking at all of the options. I've discussed three options with you. All of them are in the works, but we will have to agree on which one uh, best suits before we take a decision. So the assurances that you are giving to parents out there now, I'm not going to um, sit here and lament about the low education budgets of just about over 7% that we have. But as Warren Buffett once said, for every tree planted, or rather somebody is sitting in the shade today because of a tree that was planted long ago. And I sort of see an opportunity here that I don't know if you see as well in terms of e-learning and where we can possibly take it, especially when it comes to the use of radio that most Nigerians have access to in terms of access to different forms of the media. Now, we have the highest out of education statistics in the world. And if we're looking at post-COVID solutions to education, do you see an opportunity for us to maximize the potential of radio learning, especially if we go back to reaching the rural poor and reaching more households and getting more children enrolled in education? Is there any way that we we can formalize this as a form of education, especially ahead of the fourth industrial revolution. Thank you, uh, Madam Salami. Again, you're correct. This is a direction that we are willing to work with. We are already on that stream. We believe that this provides us an opportunity, this uh, uh, COVID uh, break actually offers us the opportunity to increase 
uh, participation like that. If you look at the, um, the, what we call the NEMI status, NEMI status is what we're doing at the Ministry of Education to coordinate with all the schools. So if you go around Nigeria, you will see, um, starting from Anambra State, they are on ABS, um, on radio. Akwaibom is on Akwaibom FM. Uh, everybody is on some sort of radio program. Everybody has that, and there's already a, a, a timetable for all the subjects, economics, physics, math, biology, chemistry, all of that. And it's already on our website in case anybody wants to do this. And we're publishing it in every state that are, you know, uh, what they are running in their states. The use of radio is already uh, some form that we, uh, the Federal Radio Corporation had been working on before now, and they had a radio. What they've done now is expanded. Now, do we want to formalize that and use that as an enhanced tool going forward? Again, you're correct. We think that these tools shouldn't actually be reduced as we go past this. It should now be made even more complementary to what is available. Because um, anybody who is familiar with the work we're doing at the Ministry of Education already knows that we were about to get everybody uh, onto some sort of program like this because of the uh, number of children we have out of schools. This experiment was done with UNICEF in Bauchi State throughout uh, the year, uh, three years ago, and we've seen how effective it can be. And we, at, when we had that, a Zoom meeting of all the ministers of education, I asked UNICEF to then step up uh, the, 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 the spread of this and assist the states and assist everybody with the kind of resources they need with which to enhance it. So you're correct. Uh, we are working and we are thinking that in the same direction. We think that this is a uh, formalized, we can formalize the, 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 the approach to use this as a conduit to, to enhance learning. We should use all our resources. There's no resource as the classrooms are fine, the physical structures are fine, enhance our teachers and their participation, we train them to be able to do uh, more work online, and then use the radio broadcast to reach as many people. We're already using that with uh, our adult and um, uh, informal education literacy campaigns. We have them already in Hausa, in Igbo, uh, Yoruba languages. We, 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 we intend that this should be uh, made to reach more people. We agree completely, and we're doing the well, same. Uh, we're honorable, just working along honorable those lines. Minister, the, we have uh, just about... Uh, a minute or so to go, but very quickly. I mean, we've been talking about lessons from COVID-19 on this program. Uh, what are the lessons that you think that the uh, persons in charge of the education uh, ministry or policy, education policy in Nigeria, have learned from what you have seen so far with our experience with uh, COVID-19? Um, for a long time in this country, we've been talking about uh, digitalizing digitalizing the education system, internet uh, penetration. In other parts of the world, they are relying on the internet. They are relying on broadband to teach children who are stranded at home. We don't seem to have that. Now, what other lessons have you learned? And what policy recommendations uh, is your ministry making at uh, all levels uh, to the Nigerian government to see that we don't find ourselves in this kind of situation again? Well, thank you, Dr. Ruben. Again, this is uh, um, how governments work. Uh, we were in the midst of preparing all of this when this hit us. So the, the lessons to be learned are evident before us. We've learned quite a few, and we are working alongside them. Uh, just before this, um, if, you, if you recall, the president was at uh, Ministry of Communications and uh, Digital Economy just a few days before the shutdown. And uh, this was part of what was being uh, agreed upon. We, there is no doubt in our mind. Government is not a, 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 cannot operate in silos. Everything that we do affects one another. The Ministry of Agriculture is working on food security. The Ministry of uh, Justice is making sure that everybody's access to justice and rights are available for you to even be able to be educated. All these things need to be available. Now, a digital economy exists on the platform of what the op uh, fiber optics that be laid, the, the security of those op fiber optics. Just before this happened, the Ministry of Communications was already complaining that some of our fiber uh, network were being affected by maybe construction or people who don't know what it means or people go out and cut it. So it's a holistic economy. We've, um, uh, we've reviewed what we need. The manufacturing sector, how do we get devices in Nigeria? Is, we, we, Nigeria is a net 
consumer of devices. Every device that you see is uh, made somewhere and brought to us. So uh, does, uh, would the economy uh, develop something that will make everybody a participant? Yes, that's, that's, the, that's the right way to go. We've learned that we've not penetrated enough. We need to have a robust penetration plan because Ministry of Education, using the studios and the capabilities we have, all our teachers can provide content. We already have that. Ministry of Education has worked on all this level for all the 20 subjects that, is, that are teachable within us, and all our expert teachers have been deployed. They have been able to record this. We have them on e-tapes. We have them on e-learning platforms. To deliver this will require the penetration that comes from other ministries. And that synergy is what the federal government is bringing together. The, ministry, the president is committed to that. You can see him every time trying to make sure that all the ministers are working together because, none, like I said, the economy cannot operate in silos. All of us are interwoven. For each decision you take in one direction, it affects everybody and how they can participate. That work is being done. The lessons that are clear from here is that that cooperation needs to be further enhanced. The integration needs to be uh, done quicker and, and are operated on sooner. We need to have everybody thinking on the same plate and moving everybody in the same direction. Everybody may not be able to participate at the same level at the same time. That is our challenge as a, as a nation, to go and reach to the poorest, those who do not, because we are only as strong as our weakest. Be those are, who are not even in schools at all, there are people who are not even participating, even with the, um, the fact that you, you may not have proper digital access, you may not be able to listen, you may not have all of the penetration. Even at that, there are still people who are not participating. So it's our job to reach out to them, get to those places and link them up. You are correct. The lessons here, uh, there, are so many, there are too many gaps, and it is important that we begin immediately to fill them. And uh, we have the energy, we have the resource, we have the personnel, we have people who are knowledgeable in Nigeria. The amount of people who are in the Ministry of Education who understand what is going on and who need to be deployed. The, the, the way we have, uh, myself and uh, the, uh, Omala Madamada who have uh, agreed, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, uh, Sonia Echono, we have all agreed that the right thing is to deploy these forces who already understand this even more than we can into the field, get them to align what we are doing with what the our international partners and providers and everybody is trying to do and coordinate this effort. We don't want you to be giving computers at places where there are no links. We don't want you to be just, you, you wake up one morning, you go and put up computer in a place where there is no light. We need to have Ministry of Power and Ministry of Energy, work, uh, our ministry, uh, our Ministry of Power, trying to find how we can align all of our work together because there's a lot of work going on, some of it in the wrong direction. It is that work that uh, coordinating it that uh, the president has asked us to do to make sure that um, everything that we're doing is in tandem with uh, our national goals and pursuits. Thank you. What Honourable. you have said is correct. Those lessons and the gaps, yes. Thank you. Now, in let's take a country like the United States of America. Many public schools, both primary and secondary, were built by American industrialists, people like the Vanderbilts, the Carnegies, the Rockefellers, etc. Has the Ministry of Education taken any proper strategic plans to some of our industrialists here in Nigeria, as our Jim Ovi, as our Aliko Dangotes, to see if we can actually develop proper public schools that will, for one, leave good legacies for them and also help us to develop the public education sector in Nigeria. Is that something that's been looked at? Um, uh, thank you, dear. And the, one of the things you must note is that uh, the private sector and these and big uh, money uh, private sector players are a recent occurrence in Nigeria. They are overburdened at the moment. None of them has built the kind of capacity and empires that uh, people uh, regard. But see, they are all, all in their first generation uh, 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 successes. These are first generation successes. The Alikos are, the, are actually their own first generation successes. Uh, there has not been an institutionalized way of coordinating their efforts. And like I told you, uh, with 65,000 primary schools around Nigeria, we have primary schools. We do have them. Is the, is the quality that is the important thing. Sometimes when people are given contracts to build public schools, they see it as um, an avenue to, make, to, to improve their own lot. So quality is also bad. 
I have launched a program which people can access on what we call the Rapid Repairs uh, re Report, which I, is a private initiative I brought on board when I became minister here. Because having participated in the education sector for a while, I understood that there are so many things that are wrong with our system. Part of it is with the constitutional role that states are to play. You, there's nothing the Federal Ministry of Education can do to any state. There are states that didn't hire teachers for like uh, eight years. That, what are you going to do to a governor who does that? It's, it's really... Um, annoying, but we, we've tried to unify them. We've spoke, we're still engaging the Council of States to many of the governors actually understand that this production of public educated uh, students and uh, citizenry is key, and they've done a lot of work. But there are many places where we lag like behind. To now ask the private sector and give them a plan, what we provided for them is look at what it is that we have. They are building their own private schools. I'm, I'm sure you're already aware that um, uh, the, the Zenith Bank's uh, chairman uh, already has a private school in uh, Abo. And, uh, and, and so, or co yes, the college, yeah. Uh, they may, we have a scheme where we have asked them to either tell us what they want to do. We have a, a, a redesigned public school uh, 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 model, and anybody is free to take on one of them. We've also asked the uh, association of uh, former uh, the, 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 the Unity School part, uh, students to look at what we're doing. The girls, uh, the girls of um, uh, Boko came to the office, and we also said, look at what we're doing around the country. Anyway, we encourage public participation, private sector-led. You may not be the richest person. You may not necessarily, but that is your focus. If you have a passion and you want to develop any of this, we have a model for all of that. If you want to participate in helping us upgrade our teachers, because the buildings are very good, but the teachers are much, much more important. That's why we encourage what Martina is doing, what um, uh, uh, everybody who, Union Bank is doing. I've, I've been to all of the events. Anyone, anybody who has anything that they want to do, uh, people think uh, I'm running health escape. I'm always at every program. Yes, I want to encourage any little, anybody who is participating in any way in developing skills, in developing teacher education, in developing a primary school, any factor. Uh, I'm, as an, I'm, I'm still at 53. I'm quite one of our, our young ministers. So I'm almost at every event, trying to make sure that anything you have that you want to participate in, I'm willing to encourage you. I'm willing to do anything you want for you to do what you would like to do in any level, secondary, uh, primary, university, there's anything you want to help us with. We have a program, we have a, a blueprint for you. If we discuss it and you want to retrofit it a little bit, we will agree. Anything you want, what you want to provide, you want to train teachers, you want to help us with any activity. The, the, the education government is Nigeria. The Minister of Education Honorable is Minister. the entire Nigeria. If I may, if if I may come in defense, here. Security, anything is based if on education. If I may education. come in here, Honorable yeah, Minister. Hello. Well, you've been talking about the uh, ministry not operating in silos. And you've also been referring to... Uh, the state governments. Could you give us an idea, the level of collaboration uh, that exists between the federal government and the state governments in terms of seeing how we can manage the education sector during the uh, season of COVID-19 and then after COVID-19? What are those specific steps? I think Nigerians would like to know at policy level and also at implementation level, because these are very special times. We have just about two minutes to go. Yes. Yes, thank you, Ruben. I, I opened um, this discussion with that. I said, we already have this participation. We have a platform where all the suburb uh, chairmen at all the states, in conjunction with UBEC, as UBEC, as the, the executive secretary at UBEC, uh, Boboyi, is the, is the anchor where everybody is imputing. And it is at that level where the Ministry of, Federal Ministry of Education has already set up a clearing desk where all of them participate. That's how come I can tell you, authoritative Anambra, uh, Cross River, uh, Eboi, everybody who is Edo. All, all, I can give you all the radio stations, TV, where they are running, because everybody is working on this together. The states are participating, and Lagos, uh, we have almost 14 states that are already running programs as of yesterday. So it's not um, immediately uh, uh, clear 
what uh, they, their problems. Nobody has a problem, really, at the moment. Nobody has presented us with any problem or any reservation. What they are doing is they are logging on onto what we have already provided. That platform exists. We are not working in silos. We've integrated what we, we, we have. And I said, the idea of, of making sure that everybody has access to it is because Federal Ministry of Education cannot run this alone. We, it's, a, it's on the concurrent list. And at the different levels, there are participation. Even at the tertiary level, we're encouraging the, the, the universities and tertiary institutions to continue to do the pro, provide the ones they can. Some of the public schools, who are, the are universities and tertiary institutions are already logged on onto what the federal ministry is doing. We've had a Zoom uh, meeting with all the vice chancellors and all the directors in the ministry and coordinating our effort. So at every level, all of us are coordinating. The states are participating. Thank that you, platform Honorable. exists. Now, it is the rollout that I've been... Yeah, okay. Thank you, Honourable. Sorry, for the sake of time, we do have to round up this interview in just a minute. But it's important for us to also ask, there is a global race for a vaccine right now. As we already know, what are our Nigerian universities currently doing, if anything, to become a part of this race for the development of a possible vaccine for COVID-19? I can, well, I can tell you that they are working very hard at it. Um, um, I spoke with the executive secretary at uh, TED Fund, uh, Professor Bogoro, before, uh, like I told you, I used to be chairman at the, at the fund. And before then, we had created a, a, a five billion fund for research. And he uh, told me that they were going to, they're already discussing with all the universities to coordinate the research effort because uh, research efforts need to be coordinated. Uh, so that you know what, even now you hear what the WHO and everybody talking about coordinated uh, race. It's not a, a competitive race, it's a coordinated race. And that's what the universities in Nigeria are already doing. There are about uh, six, and because uh, Professor Rashid, uh, uh, who is the, the executive secretary at the, the Nigerian Universities Commission, is also coordinating the effort of everybody so that we know who is doing what. Who are those who are researching on the molecular level, those who are researching at the vaccine level, those who are researching at each of the levels. The universities are providing us with some sort of guidance of what they know. Uh, corona, uh, uh, like all viruses, has, has it. Well, Honorable Minister, thank, Hello, you very, sorry. thank you very much for joining us this morning on The Morning Show.